All right, so here is my daily driven 2009 Nissan 370Z. Over the years, many people have asked me about my build via Instagram. So I decided to make this video to inform everybody what I'm running and why I'm running it. The first thing many people notice about my car is my ASD hydraulic handbrake. Since I like drifting my car very often, it is important that I have a handbrake that works well. The factory one can be adjusted to lock better, but will eventually stretch out and will no longer work. Like I said, my choice of handbrake is the ASD handbrake that comes with the Willwood master cylinder. I'm running it to the ABS box with um, these steel braided lines. Since my car is 11 years old and daily driven, I've had to replace my shift knob. Here's an aftermarket one I found on eBay. I purchased it because it's solid metal and it's one pound weighted, so the shifting feels great. I have the OEM steering wheel because I like using cruise control on long drives and I like to adjust my audio with my steering wheel controls. The next thing people generally notice about the interior of my car is my racing seat. I have one racing seat, it is an Energy Prisma. The passenger has a stock seat for more comfort and to take advantage of the luxury items in the car, such as electric seat controls and seat warmers. This Prisma seat is large and I fit very well in it. It is a little wider than the OEM 370Z seat, so I had to cut into my door card to make room for the seat. As you can see, the seat now fits perfectly and has all the clearance it needs because of the cut door card. I'm 6'1 and I go to the track, so I need to wear a helmet and I barely fit and small sports cars so i have this buddy club low profile seat bracket i found it on facebook for a great price and i've been running it ever since with no issues under the hood it's all stock because i don't want to get state reft because i live in california and law enforcement is very strict with auto modifications here I also like to have an OEM car so that I get better fuel economy, better reliability, and less problems. If you look through my front bumper, you can see my 30 row oil cooler. This is very important to have because these cars have a high operating temperature and the oil temperature is the first thing to go up in the car and if you don't take care of your car, you'll blow your engine. I'm on wet sport wheels. The model is SA55M and they are 18 by 10 plus 20 squared. In the front, I run a 255 3518 um, Federal 595 Super Steel. And in the rear, I run a 265 3518 Kenda K20A Kaiser. I run those tires because they're long lasting, high performing, and affordable. Now I'm going to show you my suspension. As far as suspension, I have Tain Street Basis coilovers. They're divorced coilovers, so the spring is separate than the coilover in the rear. I have a GK Tech angle kit, as you can see down there. I cut off my bump stop and I have GK Tech bolt-on rack spacers. The angle is much better than stock and for the price you can't beat it. I took off the under shroud and I took off what goes under the wheel well to prevent clearance issues and with these 18 by 10s I've had no issues so far. 
I also run Boltonk spacers. These are from eBay. They're 20 mil in the front and 30 mil in the back. As I mentioned before, I live in California. So law enforcement's strict with modifications and I run stock exhausts to fly under the radar. Maybe the most important modification to this car is the welded differential. It is a stock VLSD that is 3.69 final drive. I've welded mine to make both wheels lock all the time so that I could drift better and more consistently. I have this cargo cover to allow me to put things away in my car, leave my car and not worry about people seeing it. It rolls away nicely and can be easily pulled out. Let's pull it out, hook it on, and you're good to go. For exterior, my car is basically stock with the exception of tinted windows. I have a tint strip on the windshield that is 8 inches, 5%, um, and then I have this, uh, the side windows tinted and the back window tinted. I believe the side windows are 10% and the rear windows are 5%, which would be this one and this one. If you're a good enough driver, driving assist will make it harder to drive. So I've created a switch, it's called a yaw switch, that basically when I turn it on, I have assists such as traction control, stability control, ABS, and when I switch it off, I have none of those things, so I could drift better. I originally put in a switch so that I could um, just go back and forth as I desired, but as time progressed, I realized that I am never going to turn this back on. So, if you want to delete all of your assists, all you do is come down here, take this off as I just did, um, cut a green wire and these lights will come up on your cluster. This, uh, these two lights will come up on your cluster indicating that you no longer have those annoying assists that make you drive worse. My 370Z is mostly stock and I like it that way because that way most parts don't fail and I fly under the radar, avoiding police attention. This car does look simple, but it has a ton of potential. I have tandemed this car with Kazuya Taguchi and his S13 practice car, and I've also driven with many other pros that are very talented drivers. This concludes my build breakdown. I believe the next parts I will purchase are camber arms, and traction arms so that I could better dial in the rear and not have that negative camber that makes me waste tires twice as quickly. Overall, I really enjoy this car and I'm eager for what the future holds. Like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my other drifting videos if you haven't already. I'll make an effort to post regularly. Thank you.